Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to check your brake rotors and find out if they're good to continue to use or if they're ready to get pitched out. Some of the things that we're gonna be covering are heat checking, crazing or crazing cracks. Uh, they're referred to as a couple of different things, but we'll go over how to make sure that your rotors are safe for use and if they're ready to be replaced or not, and how to measure thickness with the proper tools. You'll not only wanna do a visual inspection and use of your fingernails by feel, but you'll also want some things like long reach calipers to make sure you're measuring the proper width and wear of the rotor. And you also wanna make sure you have a set of rotors on hand in case you need to replace them, like these. So join me on this video and I'll show you how to take care of all. The first thing I want to cover when it comes to checking your brake rotors to make sure that they're okay is the surface cracks that you will see appear on the rotors under heavy use. Crazing, crazing cracks, or heat checking as it's known, is probably one of the most misunderstood parts of checking a brake rotor. As I zoom in here, you'll start to see what I'm talking about. These here are surface cracks, or crazing cracks, heat checks, etc. This is not an indication that your rotors are bad. However, you do want to keep an eye on these and make sure that none of these little surface cracks are extending out to the edge of the rotor. And if they are, regardless of how thick the rotor is, that is when you want to start to replace these rotors. So what I'll do is I will take a look at each of these surface cracks along the entire surface of the rotor. And I'll inspect every section of the brake rotor to look for these cracks extending onto the lip itself or into the center of the hub. As long as there aren't any cracks that have extended to the lip or onto the edge of the rotor itself, then the next thing I wanna do is check the rotor thickness. Now, to check the rotor thickness, Every manufacturer has a set of specifications that'll tell you what the acceptable rotor minimum discard thickness is, uh, what the rotors come in at when they're brand new, and some of them will even have instructions on the minimum thickness if you're getting your rotors resurfaced. One of the tools to use for this is a set of long reach pliers. And the reason they wanna be long reach is because if there is a lip that is grooved into the rotor, you wanna make sure that you can get around that lip and you're getting an accurate reading. The other thing is when you take the measurement, you don't wanna slide these off, otherwise it, this will just expand back out to the outer lip. In order to get an accurate measurement, what you want to do is zero out the measuring calipers or the mics, slowly open them up, set them onto the rotor itself and take the reading from there. Without sliding this off, this is showing me 33.45 millimeters. So at 33.45 millimeters, these rotors are still safe to use. And I know that because the specs on this particular rotor, which I'll throw up on the screen now, are 34 millimeters brand new, and their discard thickness is 32 millimeters. So as long as there are no extended heat checks or craze cracking or crazing that is going to the outer lip, I am still good to use these rotors. Again, common misconception here is that these surface cracks mean that your rotor is shot. And that's just simply not true. Moving on to the rear rotor, typically your rear rotors won't go through as much abuse as your front rotors do, but it's still important to keep an eye on them and make sure that they're in healthy condition to continue to use, whether that's road use or whether you are using them on track. Now, the new thickness on the rear rotor is 26 millimeters and the discard thickness is 24. So what I'm gonna do now is just check the thickness using those same long reach calipers. And these are reading 25.45. So these are also good to use and you don't see as much craze cracks or heat checking on the rear rotors because they just don't go through as much abuse as the fronts do. I do wanna, however, call out some of these spots that you see 
around the rear rotor itself. Some of these spots are made uh, a couple of different ways. Sometimes it's pad deposits. Uh, if your pads are, or if your rotors are really hot and your traction control is getting engaged, uh, a lot of times people don't realize it, but your traction control activates your rear braking system to kind of keep the car in check. So sometimes what'll happen is it'll kick on when the rotors are really hot and kind of give you this pulsing. This can also happen from ABS engaging as well. Going forward on track days, I am not using any of the performance traction management systems. I'm turning traction control off. Now, I don't recommend that if you are new to tracking your vehicle. It took me a really long time to get comfortable enough in this car to do that myself. So I shouldn't see this pattern happening as much going forward. A few other things that I wanna call out on the braking system is when you are checking these out, don't just check the front of the face of the rotor. You also wanna make sure you check the back face of the rotor as well, and make sure that there's no debris anywhere lodged in between the uh, cooling ducts if you have a two-piece rotor. Um, the fronts are really easy to check the back on because you can move them physically by hand or by rotating the steering wheel on some models. The rears are a little more difficult because they're fixed in place, but the idea is the same. You wanna make sure that you're checking both the front and the rear of the rotor faces to make sure that they're safe to continue to use or if they need to be replaced. If you do need to replace your rotors, the nice thing about the Camaro community is that we do have a really great wide selection of options, whether it's the OEM replacement rotors or whether it's DBA or it's uh, gyro disc, either one will be a suitable solution to replace the OEM rotors with for regular road use or, or track purposes. That's it for today's video. It was a short one. I just wanted to make sure to clear up some misconceptions around heat checking and make sure that we're all out there on safe rotors. Till next time, thanks.